Here we are, Jerry. The oh week my God. is upon us. Oh no! Oh dude. no, Jerry! Stop! Do you know who else stop. is here? Do you know who else is here? Oh, we got someone else oh, here. Lady oh, Slimer. it's Lady Slimer. Oh, Patricia. <laughs> Patricia's here. Uh, what's I forget what I said her name was before. Oh, good. It was Patricia. Heavens sakes, my. <laughs> Maybe you she'll make never, a return. Man, you know they. I don't. I, the I things don't that you so. could say. The things that you could say <laughs> about Lady Slimer, man. What a choice. What, what a, a choice vibe. Lady Slimer was. No, but yeah, we've made it, Jerry. Right. This is the week right we're talking about afterlife. We plan on doing this as a podcast. Right. We thought, hey, let's kill two birds with one stone. Make it a live stream. Other people can join and give their thoughts as well. But we also have another person to give our thoughts. The one and only, our dear friend, one of my favorite people in the world, William Dick Boy Sheehy. <laughs> I think it's I think it was a, it's Richard. William, it's Richard, Richard William Sheehy the Fourth. Richard William Sheehy. Dick, That's yes. right. I have two Dick. things already. Will uh, first <laughs> one, Slimer. I hardly know her. Um, yeah. I, I, I did. <laughs> She liked it. <laughs> she did like it. <laughs> she, she, she did. She did. Listen, busting makes me feel good, yes. but not as good as being here with y'all. So I'm very, very Aww. excited to be here. And her. And her. <laughs> <laughs> mostly her. Lady, lady. That's mostly fair. Lady Slimer. Yeah. Um, Bill, happy to have you here. There's something interesting about our relationship uh, in terms of what we've done. Bill was our first guest a long time ago, almost five years ago. I always bring this up because it makes this my is, heart warm. It, it's the con contractually obligated it, it mention how I was the first yeah, guest to, on Bob Backcast. We, we, yeah. we, we have to punch our card every few times a yes, year and stuff, so, which is – I gladly do. Gladly do because oh, I want course. that free I want that free coffee. At the, at the end yeah. of but, the – I thought it was a, a free five-pound bag of crawfish. That's what I was – oh, you know what? That's what I, that would I can be make better. it happen. Be I can make it happen. So the reason why I say that is because – you know, Star Wars has a, has a as a, I guess you could say a continuation of legacy movies and shows. And mm -hmm. this movie in particular that we're going to be discussing, Afterlife, was the legacy movie for this franchise. And dare I say, I think I put it in the description of this episode. This is the best legacy movie since The Force Awakens. Mm -hmm. There is something about yeah. like, yeah, but without having to get the full team back together, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, I love this movie, and you know, I sent y'all some show notes. Uh, I real quickly, I'm gonna read a, um, I'm gonna read a synopsis uh, of uh, of Afterlife for those that may need to get caught up. Um, give me one second. Uh, but when this movie came out originally, I don't know about y'all. I was so hyped for it. I remember when they showed that teaser. I think it was in like 2020 or even 2019 mm -hmm. of the Ecto one, like the wind blowing the Ecto one. Blowing ones. the, yeah. When was yeah. that? Was that even was that before? Like was that, that air was before Tross? I don't even remember. That might have been before the. Oh, I don't know. Was it before well, Tross? I don't think I, so. I think this was a movie that like got pushed because of the pandemic. If I'm remembering correctly, it was. Oh. It did. Cause, I, because I think it was I remember I was still married when the that trailer <laughs> came out. Um, wow. And I wasn't when the movie finally did. I, so I, I understand. That. I understand. Yeah. And I think yeah. because it was, was a pandemic in between. Because it was in the pandemic, I didn't see this movie in theaters. Like I haven't seen it in theaters ever. I've saw I saw it and I don't think yeah. I saw it during its theatrical run. So like I, I think it's a testament to how you're talking about the legacy being one of those legacy movies it being such a great a movie and b legacy movie that like even like my first viewing experience was like not in a big mega screen theater it was just on my 50 inch tcl so like it, wow it, yeah yeah let me look it up now that you're saying it i'm actually super curious uh i think like, I, I, do, I think it was 2021 because there's like a, a scene in it where they do all like the there different is. years yeah. where it's like, and then the one where it happens for us is like 2021. So it I was, think it, it was 2021. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it's God. And, well, and so the trailer, I don't remember the year exactly the trailer dropped. I remember where I was when that, like it was kind of, they used it as an announcement. I have it. I have it right really. here. The trailer dropped on January 16th. 2019 before the bombad yeah. cast even existed before we yes. met celebration that is 
for, but we're gonna watch it real quick if y'all okay, don't mind. Right. Put it on. I'm fine. Yeah. It, well, let me just re like I remember being at work. I was. I was. In fact, I was getting off my shift. I was about to uh, head home, and I saw this had dropped, and I stopped in the break room and oh watched this God. thing. And the you will not believe the hype. I was like, listen, we're we're getting a new Ghostbusters movie. The last Star Wars saga movies coming out this year. Yes. Yep. Um, so Celebration. I have my tickets for Celebration, or, or, or almost did. You know, dude. Was this is twenty nineteen. Man, that was a great year. If I'm going to be honest with you, I know fantastic. a lot of. I know a lot of. Some might things. say the last good year before things went. But no, I'm just kidding. Well, I mean, seriously, seriously, for real. There was though, a yeah, weird yeah. feeling in the air when I reflected 2019 how I feel about it. So mm. let's watch this. This was unbelievably hyped. I'll never forget when it dropped. Here we go. Love this trailer. This is just like that. Uh, Force Awakens trailer too. The very, very first one on Thanksgiving. Yeah, oh, exa that ex oh, exactly. Yeah. Dude, the as soon as this music started up. Oh, Holy shit. <laughs> so cool. Little did we know. Yeah. Oh, we were. <laughs> well, actually, this this it's funny because so it, it more feels like a warning for COVID than like a summer so it does. 2020. Yeah. <laughs> it, it is. Yeah. Summer 2020. Get ready and to have your so, life ruined. <laughs> I was I was blown away by that originally, and I I was a, I liked Ghostbusters, and I wasn't as big a fan as I am now because of Jerry and you know being able to watch these movies over again. I've kind of right. fallen back in love. I've been finding myself watching Ghostbusters lore videos now. But let me let me it's, get a let me let me get a synopsis going for y'all. In Somerville, Oklahoma, Egon Spengler captures a, a ghost in Ivor Shandor's mind, but dies after setting up defenses against another ghost from his farm. His daughter, Callie, inherits the farm and moves up there with her kids, Trevor and Phoebe. Phoebe discovers her grandfather's legacy in the haunted farmhouse. With the help of a friend and a Ghostbusters fan, they accidentally release a dangerous ghost setting off a chain of events involving Gozer's return. They contact Ray Stance to help and learn about Egon's past actions. Egon's ghost guides them to a hidden equipment, get to his hidden equipment, and leads them to confront Gozer's resurgence. With a town in chaos, the new Ghostbusters, along with the original trio, Ray, Peter, and Winston, battle Gozer and its minions. With Egon's help from the afterlife, they defeat Gozer and trap its minions. Egon reconciles with his family and friends before truly passing away. Mm. Man, I that that is a great way to summarize it. But the emotional impact of this movie is very hard to like really comprehend if you, you know, don't know the real the real story behind it. So, Jerry, mm -hmm. do you mind telling us what happened to the actual actor that played Egon? Right. Well, so in 2014, um, Harold Ramis, who was a prolific comedic actor writer just a just a fantastic writer and all around anyway yeah um he uh well he passed away mm -hmm. um and it was it was that was so he passed away 2014 we lost carrie in 2016 mm -hmm. his was the first celebrity death i think that truly affected me because that was like that's like the very first little bit of my childhood you know is ghostbusters mm -hmm. and everything mm -hmm. like that and to have someone as integral as Harold Ramis, who, again, wrote the first two movies, helped uh, Dan Aykroyd write the first two movies um, and played just such a arguably the best character in the franchise. The most, Egon Spengler. Mm -hmm. yeah, the most yeah, well, the most well, the most interesting character, too. You know, just like he he there's depth to Egon and just like yeah. mystery that you kind of you really dig and adds to the, the comedy. But it also makes him super interesting. And um, he added a lot of that. To that was all Harold, you know. Um, he was he's saying he wanted to play it like he didn't want his character to smile, like ever. Yeah, <laughs> like hardly ever in the movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, yeah, and and pardon me, I haven't, I, I don't have like what exactly he passed away from, but just you know, it was just a really sad day. You yeah. know, I remember someone made like fan art of uh, a proton pack in the for in the you know in the foreground and in the background you got the silhouette 
of Egon walking away holding uh, hands with Slimer. And oh, I about wow. I I was destroyed wow. by 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 an old by by a tall lanky scientist guy holding hands with a green turd ghost. <laughs> and I was bawling. I was bawling my eyes out. It was just so it was it was beautiful and sad and um it's just he's someone that will always be missed. Mm. And so, you know, they they tried to give a little bit of a we, we've talked about 2016's Ghostbusters answer the call already. They they gave him like they they put a bust in the in the college it looked like him and they had cameos from the other guys. Um they dedicated the movie to Harold, but when they came around to do this movie and a lot of people complain it's not as funny as the other ones. It's like, why are they making it serious? Oh, you found it. Oh, my. No. Why are you doing this to me? Don't do this to me. Isn't that it's beautiful? Amazing. It is amazing. Isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it kind of, now, looking at it now, it kind of looks AI created, but this was years before the AI <laughs> yes, was like yes. readily available. So like, I think that someone just hurried that out. Um, yes. But it was still beautiful, beautiful art. I wish I knew who it was. I could give you credit. But anyway. Um, yeah. So, uh, you know, a lot of people's complaint with this movie is it's it's too serious. It takes mm -hmm. itself too seriously. And the thing is, with they wanted to make a movie that was not only passing the torch, but was for Harold. They mm -hmm. felt like yeah. they had to honor Harold before they could move on and tell other stories. Yeah. And I think that's very, very, I, like, very, very cool. I think that the that that criticism that it's. It's too serious. I th I think it finds the right balance. I think that's what I what I like about this movie a lot. Exactly. It, it finds the right balance where yes, this is a legacy movie. Yes, like the stakes are really really high, but like you've got a character named Podcast and like Paul Rudd <laughs> and, 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 and and Carrie Coon, like get it on on a rock and <laughs> it, it's it, it's so like it's such like. I, I kept thinking, like, as I was watching it last night, like, it's such like a, a movie from the 80s. Like, it, it, yeah. fits, the, it fits the yes. tone. I agree. Of, it fits the tone of those originals. And also, like, I think takes it into a new place. And so there are silly parts to it. But, like, it was always silly. Like, when yeah. you... You show, put Patricia up again. Put Patricia up one more time. Patricia. Okay. Patricia. Yeah. Listen. Like yeah. we could we could have had this. We could have. <laughs> I just want to. Uh, we need the the Patricia solo movie. Patricia. Yes. A, a, a Ghostbusters <laughs> story. Have you? So, seen, my Bill, have you seen? Have you seen that 2016 Ghostbusters? I, ha I haven't seen 2016. Okay. 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 There's the Scotty. Should we? Should we reenact the part where they, uh, where the Slimer and his girlfriend get blown up and their their seat comes flying at the camera? Before okay, we do on. that, so, I, well, I will sorry, say this. I'm derailing. I want. I know. I want to say one thing to Bill's point. Jerry and I rewatched it last Thursday together, mm -hmm. and we kept saying how this is like Steven Spielberg. Yes. Yes. Movie. Yeah. The way yes. the camera Amblin moves, entertainment the lighting. And look, here's a fun fact for those that don't know: when it comes to this movie. If you like the cinematography and you like Star Wars, the cinematographer for Afterlife did all of Ahsoka. So that Man. is and like it, right? the lighting of that show. <laughs> like think about how that show is shot. And like you can almost make an association that arguably mm -hmm. this is, and I will say it, it most certainly is the greatest shot Ghostbusters movie. Oh, And Ahsoka yeah. is, it, besides Andor, is the best shot Star Wars TV series. So like Yes, there's something to that. I feel I don't know. I I, don't know. I totally agree. I I totally agree. Uh, so I, go ahead. Oh, you go. I, I was going to ask you what you thought of the movie when you first saw it, Bill. When because, I first, uh, yeah. So I I saw it in the middle of the pandemic, it and I kind of didn't. Ghostbusters wasn't big for me when I was growing up. Like I had yeah. seen it and like I liked it, right? But like it was never like you know Star Wars or. For me, Lord of the Rings or any of that kind of stuff that was like coming out when I was a kid. Yeah. But I think I, I think I've told you this behind the behind the scenes. Yeah. Um so I was very, very close with my grandfather, my my granddad. Mm -hmm. Um and having a movie that is about the legacy of Phoebe's and 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 Finn's grandpa. Uh, I, I was I, I I wasn't expecting to affect me as much as it did, 
Because like I was expecting like silly Ghostbusters, and then like sure. right when he shows up at the end, like <sighs> it's like like I, I have a couple notes, and like I, I've I think we were the last episode I came on, we were talking about it, and like it when he shows up and holds helps Phoebe with the pro the proton pack. Mm-hmm. It's I, I I just this is. There are times where I feel like my granddad is holding my metaphorical proton pack. God bless. Yeah. Where yeah. he's got my hand. He's his hand is on my shoulder. He's messing with he's fixing my hair. And that gives me strength. Oh, and, dude. Man, I, when, the first time I saw this, like I said, this is Ghostbusters. This isn't gonna make me cry. <laughs> right. And then well, uh, yuck fest. Oh Here my go. god. <laughs> oh my god. I am sobbing. Yeah. <laughs> and I, you know. It's, it's a, like you said, it's a, a legacy movie, and I think that it, it takes, it takes beats from the Force Awakens. I think and it was definitely, mm-hmm. I, I think, a, a, a huge influence on the movie. Um, yeah. But like the heart and like the end, whatever, whatever gripes I have with like up until like the last like twenty five like 30 minutes are like g- evaporated Bye-bye. Yeah. The, the minute mm-hmm. that uh, that comes on. So I, my first experience with it was being um, deeply affected by it and yeah. missing my granddad. So God bless dude. I, and I, I love that you yeah. say that because this is one of those movies where at least like you said, it's very disarming, you know, it's, mm-hmm. it's says the title of ghostbusters, but like, you know, things things are obviously meant to make you emotional. That patriarchal idea makes me emotional too. You know, mm-hmm. I, but I think all of us had really good grandparents here that that are from yeah. a generation that is actually very much gone. And I don't know if you noticed, Harold Ramis was born in forty four. My grandmother was born in thirty eight. Like, like mm-hmm. that's really yeah. not far off. No, you know what I mean, so that he even looks like not like my grandfather, but he like the way they do that whole scene, like. I don't know. They, there's a look to him that feels so authentic, and mm-hmm. and I, I guess to me too, Bill, you you do feel that guiding hand every now and then, you know, weirdly mm-hmm. enough. And oh, maybe I am more like this person than I thought I was. And I love that the, the whole arc that makes me so compelling is that Phoebe doesn't know who she's like. She's kind of like uh, she's not gonna make any friends, but she embraces her true self mm-hmm. and the person that she is. She really is the spirit of her grandfather just manifested mm-hmm. in a different body. And like, you know, her interest in electricity and stuff like that's not, that's one of those things where I like, I feel very strongly about genetics. Like mm-hmm. some things aren't taught. Some mm-hmm. things aren't nurture. You know what I mean? A lot of things aren't mm-hmm. nature. Like your, your ability to be musical is nature. If your parents and your family don't have any musical blood in them, you might not have that musical blood, right? It's just, <laughs> It's weird, right? So you're watching this movie, and 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 the entire time I'm like, oh man, this city's gonna make me cry, and it did. Don't get me wrong, but when it said for Harold, when it, that yep. star goes up, done. Yeah. I was done, yeah. boys. I was <laughs> out of the count. Jerry and I watched it last Thursday. Look, I'm gonna actually pull up the screenshot of pull us up, yeah. crying. This is us watching well, it in full tears. Hold on. Yeah, bring bring this up, bring this up. But yeah, no, it, and honestly, Bill, just your heartfelt description, by the way, oh, of, of how this affected you. Uh, you you're gonna bring me to tears, my man, because that's God uh, damn. Are you beautiful. kidding me? <laughs> you can only see my face. But I'll get a better. I know. Uh, <laughs> we were watching together. I just like did, I like did screen capture as fast as I could. Right. And we were so big. Oh, hey, what's up, Brennan? Um, it, well. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Bill. No. no, no I, so just like putting a here like, it is for, for me. Oh, fine. I didn't do it right. Yeah. <laughs> well, you can tell we're sad. You can see you can see the top half of Scotty's face, the bottom half of my face. We, we're we we're destroyed at work. I keep two pictures on my desk and it's if I can find it, I'll I'll send it to you later and mm. I'll, I'll, I'll show you what it, it's my me and my godfather at my confirmation. Oh, and wow. he's okay. he's praying as hard as anyone's ever prayed before, and you could see it on his on in his face. And then the other one is a picture of me when I was like four. I look like Opie, um, smiling <laughs> into the camera. That's so wonderful. And my granddad is holding my newborn sister. Oh, and like, dude! And so, oh, like, that's man. That's with me every day. So, man. like, yeah, he's he's been dead since two thousand eight. 
and I yeah. have felt him every single day since he died. So, of like, course. once incredible. again, the, the proton, he, the hands on the proton pack, it's there. Yeah, absolutely. So, look, uh, you go, Jerry. I have your phone ahead, up, by well, the way. I've got it queued up. Oh, okay. You want to? You got to get it queued up here. Yeah, okay, here let's it is. Bring, bring that up. Go ahead, and bring it up there. What we got? What we got here? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so, so low polygon. I, what you don't know is I've seen this movie because this became a comfort movie during the because this came out right after my divorce during the pandemic when a lot of things were in turmoil for me. And I said I wouldn't get too personal to Scotty the other day. Thank you so yeah. much, Watsy. Um, I said it would, I didn't want to get too personal, but I'll, I'll go ahead. I'll just, I want to share because like, we feel like we're really like sharing here today. I want to get candid. And um, I saw this movie at a time when I wasn't sure. And hello to my parents in the living room right now visiting me. They're about to cry probably. Um, I wasn't sure how often I was going to get to see my kid. You know, because we're like, we just worked out like the 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 uh, agreement of when, we, you know, when she spends what time with who. Mm -hmm. And it's when you go from spending every day with your child to you can't see them as much. And then now you got one of my childhood heroes in Egon, Harold Ramis, um, in this situation where his daughter thinks that he didn't love her because yeah. he wasn't able to be wow. around. And what I connected with was that ending where they finally, you know, I just, I just, it, all that was with, it, it was, was, you know, going through my head watching this movie for the first time, bawling my eyes out, was I just wondered, I just hope she knows that I care and that I love her, Ooh. even when I'm not with her. And, and it's, this movie is, is just a love letter to like, and I've like, Bill, man, I, you seriously, I, I love these stories about your grandpa because it's it's so heartwarming. We all have, you know, we all have that grandparent. Hopefully you have a grandparent that yeah. means that much to you. My grandpa, I think about like, I'm going to make my mom cry now. Um, her dad was the only grandpa I knew. Right. Oh, and everything. Okay, and okay. and so when he passed away, right, I would have little random things. This is a little silly thing here. I had a couple times in my old house when I was married, when I would get up early to go to work, my coffee maker would come on by itself without, I wouldn't set a timer or anything. And yeah. I always used to just say, Oh, that's just grandpa helping me out. Yeah. You know, like Beautiful. you say, here you go. Let me, let me turn the coffee on for you, man. And little things like that, little things that are like that are so special. And this movie captures it so perfectly. Yeah. Oh yeah. Dude. I wore the wheels off of this movie for the yeah. past several years, I'm telling you. And I thought that I was going to be done. I watched it a couple of times <laughs> over the past year and I didn't really like fully ball. Like, uh -huh. and then when me and Scotty were watching it, it's just that so you get, the, <laughs> we get that human connection, you know, it's, you yeah. can't, it doesn't work for everyone and that's fine. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. but yeah. me and Scotty were both just in tears because it was a special moment. You know, it's like this, uh, it's, it's such a powerful, the whole you're talking about the little things the way they do it is so masterful you talk about the tussling of the hair and stuff he does he just kind of oh. the way he fixes finn wolfhard's collar trevor's collar mm -hmm. oh. he, pulls, he brushes the hair out of uh phoebe's eyes and then the hug that he gives his daughter at Jesus. the end completely wrecked me and yeah. anyway well i'm gonna stop making my parents cry but uh no but, no and, uh, but that it's it's so they did i think they nailed it Personally. Yeah, this is what's great about movies. This is what great what's great about storytelling is yes. that yeah. no matter what it it affects us in deep and meaningful ways. It reminds us of the people yes. that we love, and I think yeah. that's you know it, it. Once again, yes, it's Ghostbusters. Yes, Slimer. I hardly know her, <laughs> but still, Harold <laughs> Ramis. <laughs> This this is all in this franchise, right? <laughs> it's the real it part. Is. That's it. It's it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. I love that this movie has affected like my my friends in this way. I love that this movie <laughs> has you know. Um... <laughs> this, this is all. This is us watching that scene. But no, I, I I do think it's important though because you know obviously. First time seeing it, reception is one thing. Legacy is another yeah. big thing. But let's look at the uh, – let's just really think about the tribute this movie had because this movie does what The Force Awakens does in the sense of let's get you familiar with new characters first, then return you to the items of the universe that you're aware of. Because I'm watching this, 
And and Bill, I might agree with you here. The first 30, 40 minutes, besides the 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 you know the cold open, I'm like, this doesn't really feel much like a Ghostbusters movie, besides mm-hmm. like the quips and the clever humor and the really good soundtrack. I'm mm-hmm. like, this doesn't feel Ghostbusters until they go to the house. The book stacking is there, right? And then you've mm-hmm. got uh the weird little things they find all around the house, the statue of the uh of the dogs, right? They the little <laughs> like yeah, like they're there's like some things I'm like, oh, there's cool elements of this. The dialogue is pretty Ghostbusters-y. But like I'm watching it and I'm like, okay, this is very Force Awakens. Because I think it's like at the 25 minute mark, we really start to get more of the Star Wars stuff, the you know, original trilogy stuff in the Force Awakens. And this does the same exact thing. But I think personally, this does Force Ghost, and I think Jerry wanted to say this. I don't mean to take it from you. This does Force oh, Ghost no, the best. This is like the best mm-hmm. force ghost we've gotten with like the game of chess, the manipulation of light, right? The movement of the mm-hmm. camera, the the small moments that you feel, you know, the spirit of Egon flowing throughout this whole movie. And uh, yeah, all the tributes are great. Does anyone have a favorite tribute? The one that kind of like made them the most excited? Like, was there a nostalgic moment that you were like, okay, this did it for me? I know mine. Mine was the proton pack. When they first put mm-hmm. the prototype back on, uh-huh. and then you hear. I remember being in a Dolby theater and the seats going. Oh man, I'm gonna oh. see the new one in a Dolby on Friday. I'm so oh. excited. Same. <laughs> Hell yeah, that was my moment. I don't know about y'all, but that moment was like, okay, I'm really back in this right mm-hmm. now. Ghost Trap Part Two. I don't know if anyone likes that scene, but that scene. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Amazing. What's yours, Jer? I I think well, I have no. one, but I want to hear yours. Okay. For, well, for me, watching this thing, it's right as it begins. I Listen, Watsy, thank you for subscribing. Yes, thank you. Honestly, <laughs> seriously, I can't recommend the Ghostbusters movies enough. So uh, anyway, but uh, as soon as that, like the Sony pops up and you hear the, the, uh, it has like the, it has like the, the, and it's not a theremin I found out. It's some other like kind of like weird organ that, oh, okay. uh, that that uh, Elmer Bernstein used instead okay. of a theremin, but it sounds very similar. But uh, it's got that ooh, like as soon as like it started this with the same music as the first movie, yeah. I was like, I'm I'm gonna love yeah. this. <laughs> like, this is, yeah, 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 this is for me. This is immediately for me. But just so yeah, it's that that tag of the score, man. That was the first thing that just like kicked me in the nuts and was like, you're here, you're home, buddy. <laughs> You're home, <laughs> Chewy. We're home, you know. Yeah, we're literally. Chewy. We're home. Yeah, yeah. Patricia, we're home. Patricia, we're home. Uh, yeah, Patricia. Yeah. I had to bring yeah. her up. No, uh, <laughs> what about you, Dick? Well, Dick Bill. Thanks for asking, Jer. I, I think <laughs> <laughs> I, I like the the Slimer coming up as you said, Dick. Um, but yeah, right. <laughs> I what's I think for me, it's the first time the the siren went off when he like takes it. Like, oh gosh! Because yes. like that was like that was the first moment for me where I was like, oh shit, this is a Ghostbusters movie. This yeah, is, we're busted. Busted makes them feel good. They're busted everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> when they turn that corner, uh-huh. exactly. Yep. So, so like I love they do that in just about ev- every one of the movies that like the you know whatever garage door or whatever opens up or something and they come mm-hmm. like a bat out of hell. Uh-huh. around the corner um that gives me chills every time too because that's again like that's like deep into the movie right that's like yeah. uh we're that's like well into the, the yeah we're like going to yeah oh so that, well done i like that one Bill. Mm-hmm. that's a great that's a good choice. choice yeah so i i think it's cool though that there is a tribute to the original ghostbusters but it's not and this is this may sound a little controversial it's not as shoehorned as some franchises do it including star wars right mm-hmm. it's not as mm-hmm. sure because it's a little bit more nuanced you just can't bring the three main ghostbusters back instantly the best way to do it and i i, I literally was talking to jerry about this uh when we watched it the phone call the mm-hmm. fact that she makes her phone call oh, from man. the police station to ray stance i was like this is how you do mm-hmm. hey we're in trouble right and <laughs> mm-hmm. I, I love the moment where you get you know, Dan Aykroyd actually like mourning his friend, like quite Dude, literally. So Dan well Dan did some great acting in this because Ray Stance is arguably the heart of the Ghostbusters and yes. all the movies. He's like the he's the innocence, he's the childlike wonder. 
and everything. And just the way that he did Ray's reaction to everything, where he's trying to be tough. When she says Egon, Egon Spingler can rot in hell. And then Ooh. when she hits him with the, he died last week. Just the, yeah. the just the way he goes. Oh, Correct man. me <laughs> if I'm wrong, but wasn't there like real like behind the scenes like drama between all of them, and that's why uh, for like I think I, think I remember. So. I don't know. I, I wasn't there like with Harold so, Ramis and them or what Jerry Harold H- Harold and uh, Bill had a falling out after Ground. Oh, Bill. that uh, was it, and so. Mm-hmm. Uh, in fact, if you, so if you go watch and we're not, we're not sponsored by Netflix or anything, but if you go watch the movies that made us episode about ghostbusters, if you want just like a taste of the behind the scenes stuff, that's a great one to watch. Okay. Um, but, uh, it's, it's fun and all that kind of stuff, but it's got a little bit of moment. They have Harold Ramis's daughter in that. Um, but yeah, no, Bill and, uh, Harold were kind of at odds for many years and towards the end as he, after he got sick, apparently according to Harold Ramis's daughter, uh, Bill went to the police station of the town they lived in, asked where he lived and got a police escort to his house and said that they like sat talking for hours and made up before Harold passed. That's cool. cool and that? so that adds layers to me as well, because mm-hmm. again, like, you know, and I think people are like, why did they make Egon? Like, there's a lot of things. We'll, we'll get into the people who think uh, Egon's a deadbeat dad and stuff like that. Sure. Um, we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. But, uh, you know, you have the people like, why they make it like make them all at odds and everything. And I, I wonder if that is kind of like their way of like, working through that trauma you know of mm-hmm. yeah man this hasn't always been fun you know mm-hmm. uh there's a lot of in the old movies uh poor like ernie hudson gets kind of pushed to the back the one like the one like person of color in yeah. in, in the in the movie yeah. and he's uh, not even getting top billing and yeah. now he's now we see he's like in charge of things and yeah. he's got the money he's got the money now backer of got, the yeah. ghostbusters he is head of ghost corp you know what's funny too you watch a movie like this and you know they were friends only because like, and I know I mentioned it earlier, but that acting on the phone where, where Dana Aykroyd has to bring that part out of his gut to oh, like man. have, it's is he brutal. like, he has a beat where he hears the news and I, and you know, I think a lot of us, I know I've gotten these phone calls a lot, you know, in my life, which is unfortunate to say, but when you get the phone call that someone's passed away, there's always a moment of, I, I like I never thought this day would come and now it's here yeah. and now I have to deal with it. And, you know, I love that they set up, they, they kind of reveal the whole plot in that moment where he's like, well, he went off cause he thought this, 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 none of us believed him. Like it's, it, it is kind of a lore dump, but in the, in the moment it's done better than most movies. You mm. know what I mean? Like yeah. it's, it's the equivalent of when Han is talking about Luke, running off because he had a he had an apprentice that you know like that that whole scene in tfa where they're looking at the galaxy and they're talking about luke's backstory like i this is the same principle but what i like about this movie is the focal point is of course egon much like Mm -hmm. tfa is luke but to me and i know tlj's its whole own movie but this is better payoff emotionally Mm -hmm. for us as a viewer for the characters and of course for the friends that really co-created this entire series it's so it, it's incredible to me it's heartfelt and like believable lore dump you know like, i completely agree it where it's yes. it's like okay yeah it technically speaking it's a lore dump but like it's yep. still like you, going off both of y'all's points about like the acting from dan Aykroyd, like you yep. feel the history there in that moment and because yes. you feel the history in that moment it's believable and it's earned i think yeah I completely agree, man. Absolutely. I- well, and again, you, if you're going to have a lore dump, uh, there's no one takes a better lore dump than, uh, than Dan Aykroyd. Honestly, <laughs> Dan Aykroyd is the master of just like giving detailed, crazy te- techno babble, whatever mm-hmm. yeah. information in the best package. And so he gets I, some yeah. crystal skull vodka and he's just ready to go. He, he just goes yeah. to town, man. He just goes to town. Uh, Bill or not Bill. Dan, send me one of those bottles, man. Come on. Jerry, I need you to do me a favor. Okay. I want to talk about our favorite scenes for this movie, and I know yours, and I would love for you to go off. Okay. 
because Bill okay. and I, I think, will feel the same exact way. When we were watching this, you had to pause the movie and tell me why you love this scene. You know what scene I'm talking about? I'm trying to remember. <laughs> I could tell you. A blur. Tell me, tell me which one it is, because I again, I love every inch of this movie. <laughs> Paul Rudd <laughs> has Paul Rudd has a very good date, mm -hmm. and to celebrate the date, he goes oh, to where? Yes. Oh, and okay. your mom so, and dad are watching, so. You Mom and dad's, and I told them this when we were watching this because oh, I so what it. I love, but a lot of people were like, oh, it didn't happen in, um, it didn't, welcome Travis, by the way, uh, good to see you, buddy. And uh, hey. okay, so a lot of people were like, it, it's not New York City, what, Ghostbusters needs New York City, and I'm kind of like, I... I'm ready, I mean, I, I'm like them to do different things, I'm ready for yes. them to do it, but anyway... When you have a scene at a an actual giant Walmart in this small ass town, which happens it like in Arkansas, I used to be a college recruiter. I drove all over the state of Arkansas when I lived down there. And if there there can be 50 people living in a city and they will have a dollar, they will have either a dollar general and a Sonic or a Walmart and a Sonic. Yes. Um, and I mean a big Walmart. Uh, yes. Like, like, I mean, they could like house the entire town in there in case of a tornado, <laughs> which I think is, I think is their reason. Maybe the point. Um, Maybe the point. <laughs> I think that is the point in Tornado Alley, actually. But, um, but when you have, if that's that area, that's right next to Arkansas. That's this is Oklahoma, right? Is yeah, exactly. So, when I was a child, and I was, I was shopping boy. with my mother in our local, <laughs> yes, and I was, <laughs> I was shopping with I my I was with mom while she was grocery shopping as a child. I would pretend I was a Ghostbuster. I would pretend I was getting chased by dinosaurs because I had just seen you know Jurassic Park. Um, I would play Star Wars I, just like to like I would make movies in my head. Sure. As we were kind of walking around Walmart. And I don't know if anyone else did that. When of you're course. Like, you know, doing stuff with like when you're out doing errands with your parents and stuff. Yeah. But I remember that specifically. And whenever I saw this scene, they released that little a little clip of this before the movie came out. Um, this speaks to my soul because it just it, it takes me right back to my childhood. It takes it's me right back to because that's what I was doing before even Star Wars. I was pretending to be a Ghostbuster, right? I was doing all this kind of stuff. And to have this entire sequence that's just fun, absolute fun, with uh, Paul getting possessed yes. <laughs> in a Walmart of all places. Just this one speaks to my soul. They made this movie for me. I, you won't convince <laughs> me otherwise. Yeah, no, so. that it, I agree with this too because there's the moment where – he encounters the Stay Puft Marshmallows, and they just come to life. And Jerry said it best. We were watching. He goes, dude, I love that this is like gremlins. This is pretty yeah. much just gremlins, but it goes yeah. busters. And I agree. It's kind of brilliant because you can do the playful, chaotic, like just right. causing havoc, them melting each other. Them yeah. One of them stabbing that's what themselves. those little. That's what those little <laughs> things are. They're like they're little yes. gremlins. They're little marshmallow yes. gremlins is all they are. It's, it's a they, brilliant, brilliant device. I love it. Well, then there's there's really good payoff at the end of it, too. Whenever they're, you know, having the big battle with goes at the very end and uh, podcasts in the back, zapping the hell out of all of them. And he comes back, <laughs> yeah. he comes out of it and he's covered in all of the marshmallow goop. I'm like, this is. Mm -hmm. perfect parallels to the first one so my favorite yes. scene actually is that scene but it's the moment that takes place after whenever they defeat gozer they're all hanging out and it's when uh it is when ray stands is talking to podcast and they're talking I about this, part. this is such a good part they're talking about uh he's like yeah i have a podcast it's this is this he goes what was the exact line, Jerry? He's well, so like, he, he, he says, uh, you should be on my podcast. And he goes, well, yeah. sure. What's it called? And he says, uh, mystery, uh, it's mystical tales of the of the unknown universe or something. It's like MTW yeah. or is what it is. Yeah, yeah. He goes, MTW, that's you. Yeah. And he goes, you're my subscriber. Just yeah. the 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 fact that this kid is talking the whole time about like, I got one subscriber on my podcast. Also, the, and the it's, Dan, it's it's Ray. And, it's Ray. and the, 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 uh, the line right after that, that's, Really finds its voice in the forty six episode. Yeah, that's that's the <laughs> scene. Oh, man. That's the I scene that does it for about... me. Yeah, that's that's yeah. it. That's the one. That's that, so that, good. That's so my good. favorite scene. Bill, do you have a favorite scene from that? Oh wait, also, I like when they hunt uh, the uh, the the muncher, not you mm -hmm. know Slimer muncher, and he's that, eating the metal and shooting it. Mm -hmm. That I love. That that was awesome. But anyway, that's a Bill, great what, scene. The chase and all that stuff. Yeah. 
I love when Bill Murray like like is stalling. <laughs> He's just like He's um, so good at it. I think we could have been a power couple. It could have been great. And yeah. then like Ernie Hudson is just like it's like, oh, it was worth a shot. You know, it's just like yeah. anytime he's riffing. And then like also like at the end with Sigourney Weaver, where that, just like the chemistry between oh, them that is thing. really yeah. is really sweet. I like that a lot. Well, that, and that's great because I was like talking with my parents too. So we we powered through Ghostbusters the night they came uh, up here mm -hmm. and then Ghostbusters 2 and Afterlife the next day. And just to kind of see, because they were like, oh, is that Bill Murray's baby when the second one pops? Because they have, it's been years <laughs> since they've seen it. So it was fun. It was like watching it with them for the first time. They hadn't seen it sure. since I was a kid. Um, but, you know, they thought the, the baby and the second one's his baby. And I'm like, and now we come full circle to, and you see rings on their fingers and stuff. Like they're finally together and things like yeah. that. Just such a good button on that relationship. I don't know if we'll get Sigourney in the new film, but that was good. satisfying enough for me. I think to, we will. What was I the think credits? We will. It was the credits too, because the credits say, you know, Ernie Hudson. You don't know she's uh, in it, yeah. And, did, and then it says and Sigourney Weaver, and then it cuts to that scene. No, did I they... agree. This is fantastic, Eric. I agree with you, dude. Yes, honest to Claude. Podcast God is the, here. Any, honest to Claude. Any right word, here. any word out of podcast's mouth is the best, man. Fantastic. Like, with the whole like he's like, in the new one, isn't he? About? Yes, yes, he is. He is. Yes, he's big time, and I've heard that he. Uh, I've heard he might be the funniest uh, in the oh, one as well, I can't wait. which makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah, but like when he's like, say, what's your what's your podcast about? Oh, you know, paranormal activity, uh, uh, mysteries, mysteries, the occasional restaurant review. Um, <laughs> That it's feels like, like the bomb bad cast. Like the everything yeah, sounds the good, like the bomb bad cast. I, I call myself podcast because of my podcast. Uh -huh. <laughs> Bill, what but was Bill, your? Did what was, you build? What was your? Yeah, yeah. what's your favorite? Oh, it was that. I, Bill, you it was said Bill it. Murray. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Bill Murray. Duh, oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, listen. Yeah, let's do a restaurant review right now. Here we go. Okay. <laughs> no, um, raising so, Cane's chicken fingers. Go. Oh bad. yes. Oh <laughs> heaven. Oh heaven, sir. Yes, sir. So um. So around this discussion now, a few things I do want to look at. Uh, to me, I remember being a kid and being told by the year 2020, visual effects will have been so good that you can't tell what's real and what's not real. This movie, because it's rooted in reality, damn good special effects. Mm -hmm. And I mean that. Like, I'm yeah. not just saying that. Yeah. I know the proton packs are real. I know the ghosts aren't real. But they're just cartoon enough and realistic enough to get away with a lot of what's going on in this movie. And like I, I remember being hearing that in like maybe third grade, like when I like 2000 and like five. And they were, they were like, yeah, it's going to be unbelievable by the time you grow up and, and it's the year 2020 and like not really believing it. But you watch a movie like this and it's so well done. Because it's, you know, obviously a real movie. It's not like Star Wars where you know a lot of it's fake. This one is extremely convincing. It's a, I think it's the best visually of all of them. And you know? also, you don't get your first look at a ghost until like 45 minutes in. Yes. Like, yeah. So, like, I think that leads up to it because you're in a real world. And then all of a sudden, like, it's like, oh, there's there's a muncher. <laughs> yep. we got, yeah. Yeah. We got, and it's like right. the, the lead up to it. We're like. Where, where the the muncher's like bitten off like pieces of metal, it's like dripping yeah. with like the the, the ooze. So yes, Ooh. yeah. Why was why am I dripping with goo? Uh, it's because this movie is so mm -hmm. good. Um, <laughs> no, um, I oh man, um, there's just there's so much about about this film, you know, well, that I love. Why are like, you like, dripping like, in goo? Sorry. Oh oh, <laughs> Patricia, Patricia, Patricia is, thank you so um, much. <laughs> sorry yeah no um, is there a is there a highlight visually that you liked is there like something in this movie that like just just tickled your brain at all just the, I, I mean it the the, the practical the, the well they, they do the cg but they also do a lot of practical with these and uh -huh. especially in the new one there's some there's a lot of practical you can see in the trailer uh that yeah. looks good um and so uh, I don't know, Bill. Bill, do you have anything that like just jumps out at you? I know yours, movie? Jerry. I know yours. You were you, we paused it and talked about it. 
The scene where they're taking, they're in the sunset. The Ecto one's yeah. going, and you see the little drone bot, and then you see them mm-hmm. chasing. Puncher. Oh yes, yeah, so and that you're, far you, you off shot you is go, that is my favorite. You're like that is like the perfect shot in the whole movie. And it is because like yeah. you can see, you can see it like it's it's panic. It's very Amblin, right? And then they get in trouble immediately after. There's like a yeah. I don't know. It feels like you're watching ET or mm-hmm. or maybe even other another series of movies like Stranger Things, where like it feels like right. that kind of scene. They're 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 doing the job, but they're going to get in trouble. You doesn't know it. You don't come it's, out of this good. It's 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 easy to pick, but like I, you know, I'm I'm easy, so why not? Um, it, I think the scene like where you have once uh, Egon has you, you have the Forest Ghost Egon, yeah. And you have the shot of all the original Ghostbusters together, and it, it's just like, oh man, like this, this, this feels great. I'm yeah. really, really, really happy that they did this. Yes, and I and I was going to say that the way that scene is done with all of them kind of looking over and like accepting it, and like even Ray stands, yeah. you know, Dan Aykroyd looks over too, and there's like a somber look on his face, like there's my buddy, you know. Mm-hmm. Ugh. Well, just like and, I mean, they captured there. Looks- I mean. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, Ernie saying? looks like. Are y'all seeing what I'm seeing? Like, is yes, this, yeah. Yes. He like, I feel like he, you know, he elbows, he elbows, uh, Bill. You know, yeah. he elbows Bill, and Bill <laughs> looks over, and I look, so they they captured. I mean, they they played the characters, you, you know, years. Lawless. But um, just like each character's reaction is perfect because like you, mm-hmm. the, Ray is somber, but he's also got like a wide grin as yep. well towards the end. He's like, oh, like he's excited, yeah. you know, like that's the thing that him and Egon used to like nerd out about and stuff like that, you know? Yeah. Um. So I just, yeah, this, well, this movie has my whole heart. It does. Yeah. And I, and I want to spend the last 10 minutes doing something real quick. Okay. Oh Lord. Okay. Thursday, we are getting a frozen empire in theaters. I'll be there. Bill, have you got your ticket yet? I don't even know. I'm actually going to be in Pittsburgh watching my University oh, yeah. of Kentucky Wildcats with uh, my, my look good friend. with with look who it is, Miss Miss Taylor. Taylor. Miss Taylor. There she is. Taylor. Taylor. Yeah, so excited. Yes. Uh, no, but Miss Taylor, um, you'll be hanging out with <laughs> Bill. Maybe if y'all have some free time. I don't know if Jared's a big Ghostbusters guy. But y'all can go maybe sneak off and see Frozen Empire. That would be a bad idea. That would be awesome. That'd be awesome. So I am unbelievably excited for this. I got tickets for this Thursday. I plan on seeing it maybe two more times after. I want to see Dude again. But I am thrilled for this movie because Jerry's been watching reviews. He's been relaying things to me. I have been watching Adam Savage's YouTube channel. And he's got like over like an hour and a half worth of videos of him looking at the props, talking to the actors and actresses, uh, and talking to the director and the writer, and, like, looking at the actual, you know, firehouse, looking at the Ecto-1. Like, there's so many videos. And this, to me, and I'm not joking, this kind of feels like the hype in my gut that I had for The Force Awakens. Because, like, Aww. there was so... Look, they were all on GMA <laughs> recently. They've all been on The yeah. Tonight Show. Like, it's it feels like that because, obviously, the last movie the 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 main actors coming back was a hidden reveal Mm -hmm. whereas in this movie front and center from the first trailer on like these characters are you know fully involved in this story and i'm not getting my hopes up for them to be the entire thing but they will certainly be there for the climax and probably the big bads fight but you never know i don't know i'm i'm extremely excited for this Uh, i know jerry is the most excited bill where, where are you weighing out on this one I'm really, really excited. Uh, you know, I, I think once I ha- like am seated, there was a moment in The Force Awakens, like when you see the the Falcon for the first time and it flies, like where I was yeah. like, okay, I'm in. <laughs> like, yeah. I, so yeah. okay, yeah. cool. Here we go. It's happening. Yeah. So I think I'll have that moment, like within like the first like ten to fifteen minutes. So I. Honestly, this movie made me a bigger Ghostbusters fan than I was before. So that's yeah. wonderful. I'm yes. I'm ready. To, I'm ready to see where it goes because, like, now that, like you said, Scotty, now that we know that these guys are like the originals are going to be part of it. Don't yep. know what capacity, but they're like it's not a secret. So they're going to yes. be in it. Yeah. And I hope I think it's going to be the perfect mix of like the new generation and the old generation. So oh, we'll see. Man. I yeah. can't wait. Well, God, and I'm I mean. So listen you know um 
every and I've been I, I've been listening to some of these uh, uh, reactions and stuff that and kind of hyping these guys up before the show and everything like that. <laughs> but uh, there, I'll say this to y'all: a lot of that I've heard from some of the people who went to that premiere, they're saying what this movie really does is gets you excited for what's to come. So God, um, dude, that is I, awesome. Hell I can't yeah. believe I, I more can't believe Ghostbusters. I know who needs it. I do. I need it. I need, the <laughs> ghost, I need all the Ghostbusters. Patricia, will you marry me? Um, Look, anyway, you also said it's going to be scary as hell. And I'm pumped uh, for that. I want to be freaked yeah. out. I want jump Listen. scares. Look, if they're done right, give it to yeah. me. I don't like when they're cheap. You know? The first one has jump scares, right? Like the librarian, yep. like was like actually, what was it? Uh, Steven Spielberg calls that one of the best jump scares yeah. in cinema, <sighs> if I'm remembering correctly. Yeah, yeah the he with did, the librarian. Yeah. It's funny yeah. too, but it's like it, you know. Um, but yeah, no, that's something that we have uh, that I've been hearing the scuttle, but y'all in the chat, um, yeah. this is apparently the scariest of the films, I can't as wait. well as extremely, extremely funny. So, so uh, I want to ask y'all this. Scary and this funny. is my last question for all of us before we go off. And, you know, obviously we're going to review the movie come uh, Thursday after me and Jerry are going to be there to talk about it. But uh, is there anything that could potentially happen in this movie that could make you uh, maybe a bit emotional? Is there anything really? I, I like I, I'm, I'm, I'm not concerned for a death of a character, but my mm. my pipe, my like my pie in the sky dream is if they get uh Lewis Tully back and they get uh they get uh oh what Harold no 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 I haven't no, no, heard no, no, no continue continue okay I was they gonna, get I was Lewis Tully agree back, with they, you that I would be yeah. destroyed I would be yes. destroyed if which Rick is Rick Moranis is in this Rick movie. Moranis is yeah. his character because he's he obviously is retired from acting and that he got beat up for literally nothing in the streets of New York and it like turned him off from acting forever or being in the public well eye uh, well forever. his well, also, but his wife uh, passed away as well. Yes, um, and so he he gave up to be a full time father. Yeah, uh, to his kids, and so, and they're grown and everything now. That's that's. I was telling my parents this story, and that's like one of the stories that like you don't hear that no, that often and everything never. like that. And just I I have uh, nothing but absolute respect for Rick Moranis. Yeah, I I think it's. Do you guys think it's more likely that a Ghostbuster dies or that a, I or Rick Moranis comes back? Because I, I think uh, I, you guys go ahead. I it, it mm. personally, I don't think you'd want to kill off any of these legacy characters mm. unless they actually do die in real life. Because I think mm. you can keep milking that. And if they see the success of this movie, well, most of these actors anyway, they don't really do that many franchises. So like, you know, I don't think they wouldn't mind being in the Star Wars limelight. You know what I mean? Of mm -hmm. like having to yeah. uh, be able to come back and do other additional sequels. I, I think killing them off would be like killing off Chewbacca. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like there's no point. Why would you get rid of a character that didn't need to die? But yeah. if done if you've done well, then give it to me. But I it doesn't seem like that's gonna happen because and Jerry and I talked to this before. Like we watched a couple of people's reactions after the movie ended, and like I remember when TLJ ended, and even when The Force Awakens ended, people were like, "The movie's fantastic, bunch of huge twists and turns." And like we know those twists and turns are, you know, Han passing away and Ben Solo and Luke dying mm -hmm. as well, and you know, like we know there was a couple of those things. But this, all the reviews have been, "This is scary. This is fun. This is funny." And um, yeah, they, it's a really good Ghostbusters. It's meant to pass the torch. So I don't know. I don't know. I would hate for a death now, myself, but if done well, I'll accept. Mm -hmm. it. Yeah, I, if done well, I do. I, I I would accept it. And honestly, it's probably more likely that one of them dies in the movie than Rick Moranis shows up, just because Rick sure. Moranis is just 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 because and, he's very secretive and private, which is fine, and that's his that good on am, him. Am yeah. I crazy but, that I think it's more likely that he comes back? Like. It, I feel I like this. I is, want that. I just don't so want to be. I'm it, tempering it, my expectations. I just think that, like, if this is like Ghostbusters two, like if this is a new generation's Ghostbusters two, why wouldn't you put Rick Moranis in it? Even if it's just yeah. like for a second, like if yeah. it's just right. like, all right, I'm here. Like you know, yeah. <laughs> like yeah. my my one hope, my one hope 
is that he did that uh, wireless commercial with Ryan Reynolds a couple years ago. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you remember that. I do. He, yeah, did it, he did that wireless commercial, and that's the first time anyone's seen Rick Moranis since the 90s. And, um, man, just and I just need a cameo. I just need him to be like, well, you guys aren't going to believe the taxes this incurred or something, you know, like something like, yeah, you know, like yeah. some, some just like Lewis Tully line, man. Just give me that, like that mundane doesn't know really like how to be a, uh, how to talk to people. Like just give me Lewis <laughs> Tully in one scene. Even I agree. If it's a stinger at the end, but, um, yeah, I know that all the reviews that I've said, again, all the reactions, everyone, uh, people are giving uh, one word reviews. They're saying wonderful, wonderful. fun. Oh. Um, and these are the Those kind are of things you also hear words a- I would use to describe Mick, Rick Moranis. So, yes, exactly. Yeah, That's true. Perfect. See, and so, yeah, I don't know. People I are think saying. This is- people, <laughs> people are saying. saying. People I've are saying. Heard, I've heard him say. I've so heard him there he is. There, there he is. is. Rick Moranis. Oh. So good. Great in Mint Mobile. Even better in Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. <laughs> <laughs> look, boys, I'm glad we could talk about this. I'm glad we can yes. look forward to things in the future. Uh, for those that are watching right now, we are at the very end, the penultimate episode you are listening to or watching right now of the Ecto Countdown. And, of course, we are joined by our Coming wonderful friend end. Bill Sheehy. I'm going to show you the, uh, the, 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 I guess you could say, the thumbnail for Thursday's stream. So look forward to a review. We will be seeing the movie. I'm seeing it at 445. Hopefully we'll be on for the same time, 8 o'clock, maybe even 9 o'clock uh, Eastern. We'll see. Uh, we'll figure it out. Well, I'm, uh, well uh, that's a, I'm, I'm going to be seeing it at 7 p.m. Eastern. Oh, so, okay. So um, then it'll I probably have, be a little late. I have the kiddo. That's fine. I have the kiddo. It'll be a late night, y'all. So, but uh, uh, we can't thank our guests. But it's going to be a good Bill. time. Bill, thank you for coming by this evening thank and talking you for, about this. Thank you. I love you. Thank Thanks you for making it. me cry, Bill. Thank you for letting me bust. You know, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> bust, it makes me feel good. It, it makes me feel so your good. Smartphone right now. <laughs> Get your TV your smartphone. <laughs> Make sure love, you love you, Miss Taylor. Love you too. Mm-hmm. So Mwah. look forward to it. The Mwah. Ecto Countdown is over. If you've missed you, any Billy. of this, if you're a new viewer, I know Watsy was in here earlier. Uh, if you're a new viewer, Watsy, thank you for joining us. Uh, just know that we have covered everything Ghostbusters from Frozen Fire's trailer to the 84 everything. movie, the, se- the second movie from 89, the music, the soundtrack, Lost Media, the, v- the, the TV show. The actual video of the TV show. Yeah, the TV, the cartoon, um, the uh, video game, the 16 reboot. Currently, right now, you're listening to or watching the Afterlife episode in Frozen Empire come Thursday. So, uh, Bill, can you do us a big favor, if you don't mind? Can you What's uh, up? Can you give us a good stay, Bob, bad to sign out this wonderful show? My please? friends, stay bombastic! Did you say impossible? <gasps> Pasquale? Only kidding, Jackie. I've changed my tune because I finally thought of a possible dream that we can all share. What is it? Oh, Pasquale? It's a dream about a world when nobody is poor or sick or hungry. Oh, oh, now that's a dream we can make come true. I'm gonna make a change. For once in my life It's gonna feel real good Gonna make a difference Gonna make it right As I coin up the collar on My favorite winter coat This wind is blowing my mind I see the kids in the street With not enough to eat Who am I? To be blind, pretending not to see their need. A summer's disregard, a broken bottle top, and a one man soul. They follow each other on the wind, you know. 
being gone.